TCP IP basic series. Uh, today we'll be looking at IP config. Uh, we'll introduce and demonstrate the IP config utility and tell you how you should use it. Uh, what is IP config? Well, it is a tool that's used for examining TCP IP settings. Uh, it is very similar to the Unix Linux IF config tool. I've always suspected that Microsoft just did not want to use the uh, same name for a tool that essentially does pretty much the same th thing. It is command line. It's not a graphical uh, utility, so you have to go to a command prompt for it. Uh, it has a number of options, most of which are seldom used. Uh, normally, we just do the basic IP config. I'll go over some of those options, and especially those that are the most used. <clears throat> Uh, the syntax is IP config, and then you have some options that you may or may not use. Um, the um, most common may be the slash question mark that displays the help. Uh, if you don't use the uh, command very often, you might need the help. Uh, next, uh, probably as far as utility and usal usability, uh, the slash all option. Uh, gives you much more detailed information than the basic IP config without any options. We also have release and renew that allows us to interact with our uh, DHCP server so that we can release any existing IP addresses that we may have or renew and renew addresses. Uh, and if you've got a problem with, uh, with your IP address where you did not get a proper IP address or something, sometimes doing the release and renew will clear up those uh, networking problems. If you find yourself having uh, problems with uh, DNS related entries, finding servers and things, sometimes if you flush your DNS, uh, DNS that will clear out your local DNS cache uh, and let you rebuild it. You can also display things and you can uh, put things in statically with it. Those options are very rarely used. Okay, we're at the command prompt and I'm going to run the IP config command with the slash question mark which is the help and when I do I get more than one screen of information so let's scroll back up and it starts out it shows us our syntax so it's IP config and then we have options whenever you're doing the help and you see things in square brackets that means they're optional <clears throat> and it shows a number of different options when you are seeing something inside square brackets separated by a vertical line these vertical lines indicate that uh, these are one of several options so you pick one of those uh, so we see the full list now moving down a little bit, we see a brief description of what each of these do. The question mark is the help, all is the full configuration, and so on. Uh, release, renew, the release 6, renew 6, the ones with 6 after it, those are IPv6 options that uh, some point in the future you may use. Then on near the end, it shows some examples of using some of the commands. So we've got um, the different examples here. I'm going to now run it just the simple IP config. So IP config. And again, I get a lot of information because I've got several network adapters, including my VMware adapter. You may only have one or two adapters. You might have a Bluetooth and an Ethernet. If you're doing it on a laptop, you may also have your wireless adapter. But here it tells me my, my Bluetooth is not connected. Uh, it gives me some basic information about my uh, Ethernet connection. It's a Netgear network card. It's giving me both my IP version 6 address, then my IP version 4, which is 192.168.1.5, the subnet mask, and my default gateway. And if I continue on down, each of my VMware adapters, it will give me the same information. And these tunnel adapters, these are IPv6 adapters, and they are not connected. So now let's use that command again but let's do the slash all <clears throat> and when we do it scroll back up we get a lot more information uh, the slash all gives us detailed information 
about our configuration. So we start with basic IP configuration. Gives us the name of this machine. It's our uh, a Win 7 Int 4 core that I've named it. Uh, what kind of node? Don't worry about that. Are we using it for any routing? Are we doing wins? Then uh, the suffix name it got, well, it's getting its IP address from a uh, local uh, internal Netgear router, so that's where the suffix came from. <clears throat> then some information about the Bluetooth. Still, it's disconnected, but it gives a little more information, including its MAC or uh, physical address. And it's con uh, it is configured for DHCP. Then our main LAN connection uh, gives the type of connection. It's a, an Atheros network adapter. <clears throat> we get our MAC address again. Uh, the DHCP enables us. We, we use the DHCP protocol to get our IP address information. We've got auto configuration turned on. Uh, then we have our IP version 6 information followed by some of our IP version 4. Again, we still see the IP address, uh, subnet mask. The next area is when we obtained our lease. Our lease is uh, when we actually got the IP address from the DNS server and when it expires. So we got it on June 15th and it expires on June 16th uh, if it's not renewed. Then our default gateway information and some more IP version 6. The DNS server we're using, which happens to be our network, Netgear router. Um, and as we go on, the same thing, same type of information with each of our uh, VMware adapters. When we get to some of our IPv6 tunnels, uh, we see the information there. Since none of them are active, uh, there's not a whole lot shown. If we had an active IP ver version 6, we would see more. Now, Next is, let's say that we, for some reason, we're having problems with our TCP IP. If I do a release, since this is DHCP, it released all the IP addresses. Now, when I come back up and look at my uh, local area connection, it doesn't show anything except the IPv6 local link address, which is an internal address. Uh, so it released those. Uh, it disconnected them. Now, if I do the renew, now this can take a few seconds, it will go out and it will now uh, go to the DHCP server, or request a DHCP server, and we will get an IP address. It will probably be the same one. And you can see here it is. So that allowed us to get rid of an IP address that we had and renew it so that we could, uh, if, if we were having some connectivity problems, that may be a way to try to uh, clean those out. Um, if we wanted to see what was in our internal DNS, Actually, let's do this. Clear the screen, and now let's do a display DNS. And it is actually going to show all of the DNS records that happen to be uh, located or loaded internally into this machine. Now, if I went to and opened a web browser and went to a website, it would add additional records, but these are the ones that happen to be in here now. There's not a whole lot because I'd cleared it out earlier. Uh, this uh, will show you those, and if you did the uh, flush DNS, that would get rid of the, your records. So, And it says it successfully flushed them. If I now do a display, there's nothing in there. But if I were to go to go and open a web browser, so let me open Chrome, and I'll actually quickly move it off screen. Um, as it opens, here it's starting to open. If I now display my DNS, because I had it opening some web pages automatically, you can see there's a lot of things now 
in the DNS a lot more than there were actually there before. Next time we'll look at the ping command.